This episode of the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast was first broadcast on the 15th of October, 2015. Welcome to the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast, the bi-weekly show that brings you the best of powerlifting in Canada, discussing trending topics, training advice, coaching philosophies, and much more. Our three co-hosts include Ryan Stinn, holder of the heaviest equipped squat and total in Canadian Powerlifting Union history, boasting a fourth place finish at Worlds and first place finish at North Americans. He is also the owner of Unparalleled Performance Training Center in Moose Jaw, as well as co-owner of Inner Strength Products. Steve Cassioli, IPF World Record Holder and Bronze Medalist at the 2015 IPF Classic World Championships, the third strongest powerlifting in the history of Canada based on Wilkes, and owner of Cassioli Strength and Conditioning. And lastly... Avi Silverberg, world team coach and world bench press medalist, owner of Pursuit of Strength, an online powerlifting coaching hub served to enhance athletic performance through programming and educational seminars. Today's episode starts right now. Welcome to the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast. Sitting across from me is Ryan Stinn and Steve Cassioli. Good morning, gentlemen. How's it going, Ryan? How's it going, Abby? Good. Good morning. So, Ryan, let me ask you this. What do you think of the British lady doing our intro? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's an interesting person to choose to do an intro for the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast, but uh, I think she does a really good job. I have to agree with that for sure. <laughs> Steve, does it feel does it feel like you want to listen to the podcast now after you hear that? Absolutely. Let me tell you what we have on the agenda today, everyone. We are starting our first podcast here, the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast. So we're going to talk about a few things today. Obviously, we want to introduce the podcast. We want to talk about why we started the podcast and what you can expect if you continue to tune in week after week. And we recognize that some of you perhaps don't know who we are in the Canadian powerlifting community, so we'll introduce ourselves as both athletes and coaches. And we have quite an exciting episode coming to you next time where we have a special guest. We'll detail who that special guest is in just a little bit. And if you listen all the way to the very end here, folks, we have a contest that you can enter to win a pair of knee sleeves. SBD knee sleeves. So that's a value of about 120 bucks. Is that right, Ryan? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there. So quite exciting. So why don't we just jump right into it here, guys? Um, why, Steve, let me ask you this. Why did we feel like we need to start a podcast? I know we were going back and forth for quite some time about, you know, that there just isn't a lot of information out there in terms of Canadian powerlifting. So why did we, as a group, decide to start a podcast? Yeah, I agree with you there. So we decided to start just because as the sport's growing and all, right, it's just good to have that information out for Canadians as a whole and then whoever else the uh, viewers are going to be, right? So, I mean, having that information ready, readily available and, um, yeah, as Canadians, like, the sport is becoming so big now. And, yeah, since I started, I mean, I don't know, this Nationals coming up is going to be huge and having that information there for everyone. I think uh, beyond that, um, I think we have a lot of really good athletes in the country, you know, along with Steven, um, who's obviously very accomplished. We have uh, a number of uh, world record holders, world champions in the country, and I think we want to bring those people to the forefront and let people uh, hear what they have to say. That's, that's been my... That's been my biggest thing here, guys, is that, you know, you're hearing, you're looking out on social media and you're seeing, you're seeing a lot of great lifters and, 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 they, you know, they have popular YouTube channels, they have popular Instagrams, and they're getting a lot of recognition and they deserve to get that recognition, but as Canadians, we have a lot of homegrown lifters here that are training really hard, training really smart, and they have a lot of good information to share. They're uh, certainly rising through the ranks really quickly. They're... Um, 
if they're not at the top of the game, they're 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 certainly trying to achieve that that next level. And I think it's a great opportunity, like Ryan said, to showcase who are who are the Canadian lifters that are up and coming, or who are those Canadian lifters that are already established and making a name for themselves in the sport, who perhaps don't have that recognition already. Um, so I think. I think that kind of leads into talking about, guys, what will this podcast be about? You heard a little bit about it in the intro. Um, in terms of that, it'll be some coaching advice, some trending topics. Um, we'll have guests. But what will the podcast essentially talk about? Ryan. Uh, well, I think you covered most of it. Um, you know, I think we want to cover a lot of the important topics and uh, and things that are of interest to, you know, People who are new to the sport, but also people who are, you know, have been in the sport for a number of years, and you know, maybe they train on their own or they train in a limited group, and they don't always have access to, you know, some information that uh, that we might think as obvious, or 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 even just to hear different perspectives uh, on on topics and uh, and coaching philosophies. Absolutely, just to build on that too, right? So even if you're a beginner athlete, all the way up to an elite level, we're going to have topics covering that. Um, wide range there, right? So, be good. And we've all, we've already reached out to some guests to talk about some topics, and we'll we'll um, we'll tell you in just a little bit who who our guest will be um, next week when we bring uh, your ne the next episode um, to you guys. Um, but what can we expect? to hear from these, we've talked about how there we have these upcoming athletes and we have, you know, um, athletes who are kind of at the pinnacle of their, of their sporting career. Um, so what can we expect to hear from these guests in terms of, in terms of knowledge? Because it's important to have that knowledge sharing and, and as a community in, in Canada, we want to ensure that, that the right information is getting out there so that all levels of athletes can um, can succeed. So what can we expect from listening to some of these guests here, Steve? Um, well, just to start off, right, we, just, we obviously want them to give a brief introduction of their history and their experience in the sport. And then just along with whatever the topic is for that day, just want them to discuss with us and just get uh, their opinion on um, the topics. And then they could reach out um, to other lifters and hopefully this will drive more um, more feedback for us. And then also uh, for the community so we can get yeah other guests and just really get those topics out there and bring it together as a whole, right? So some of the topics that we've already um, are planning to cover um, include um, some some of the some trending topics that you're seeing out there in, in social media. Ryan, what are some of the what are some of the topics that you can that that the viewers can expect in the next few weeks? Uh, well off the top of my head, uh, I remember, you know, we're looking at stuff like uh, cooked versus raw lifting. Um, I think that's a pretty touchy topic for a lot of people, but uh, I think it's important to share perspectives. Um, we also talked about, you know, training alone, um, how to how to train by yourself effectively. Um, we talked about nutrition ideas and, uh, um, you know, meet day preparations, um, peaking for, for competitions, stuff like that. So... What we really want to try to do here is we want to we want to get information that is very practical in the hands of the athletes so that they can start employing some of these um, some of these learnings into their own kind of training or their training group or practice and um, you know some of the trending topics that Ryan had already said things like cutting for meats right how do you do it without you know losing strength how do you how do you do it effectively I know. You know, Steve and 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 myself have, have had to have had to go through that. So we have both the personal experience, but we're also looking at bringing on some experts. And there's also obviously, you know, nutritionists in the powerlifting community that we want to bring on board. And um, you know, we want to talk about periodization. We want to talk about programming. We want to talk about, you know, what is the best way to stack your training cycle so that you're peaking, you know, effectively for for meets. So. All of this information we want to kind of be bringing to everyone and ensuring that um, good information is being relayed and getting in the hands of the athletes. So let's talk about the logistics of this podcast here for a second because I think everybody wants to know um, when they can expect the podcast to be released, how long each episode is going to be, um, how many are we going to launch. So Ryan, can you speak to that? 
Well, the plan is to do a podcast every two weeks. Uh, they'll be released on Thursdays. Um, and we're, I think we're aiming for about, you know, 25 to 30 minutes of, of content. It's a nice length for people to kind of digest in either, you know, um, on a commute or, or something like that. It's not too long, not too short. Um, yeah, like that. In, in terms of how many episodes we're going to launch first. So we're, we're committing to doing this podcast and bringing this information to you and bring um, guests along for the ride as well. So how many episodes are we going to be launching initially um, in this first quote-unquote season of podcasts? I think well, we're going to do eight episodes to start. Um, and I think we're hoping to uh, possibly do um, a combined live episode when we're all at the Commonwealths in December. So... Uh, I'm not sure if that works out to be the, the finale, but I think that's one of the exciting possibilities. So for those of you who are listening, both Ryan and Steve and myself, we live in different provinces, Ryan living in Saskatchewan, Steve living in BC, and myself in Alberta. So we often get together in a digital environment to talk about things quite often, but it's, um, it's hard to get all of us in the same room. But we are all competing at the Commonwealth Championships this December in Vancouver, BC. So we are hoping to put together a podcast at that competition. And like Ryan said, that may or may not be the finale episode, but we're going to plan for eight episodes. And if we uh, are seeing that, uh, you know, people are tuning in each week and our podcast is growing, then we're going to commit to a second quote-unquote season where we'll bring to you um, more episodes and hopefully some more interesting guests. Let's talk about the process of starting this podcast because I know it's, you know, we had this idea in the summer here, guys, and, and you know, it's taken all the way until the middle of October here to kind of bring things to fruition, so. Yeah, so just going by it, we first started off, we all to buy some mics, right, to get the equipment to start it up. I know um, we've been working on getting a logo. We're starting up a, a website. And um, we're uh, slowly reaching out to possible guests to um, get on the podcast. So that's been the process so far, and then um, we have a lot more to come. Yeah, I think I think once you, once you have an idea, you don't realize how much work is actually involved in the 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 things that you have to get kind of in line before you before you launch something like this. It's about organizing the first season. So we, we ha like we said, we have eight episodes. Ryan, how have we kind of structured the, these, these first eight episodes in terms of like thinking about the topics and, and um, you know, the process of, of, of putting together the, the, the first season? Well, I think we all, we've all um, communicated our, our possible ideas for the episodes uh, through the last couple of months, um, kind of vetted some ideas, some possible guests. And uh, you know what everyone can bring to uh, to these topics, right? We want to make sure these are important topics, but we also want to make sure that the topics work with the guests we bring on, right? Um, we don't want to ask a super necessarily like myself about the best way to cut for a competition. Although, you know, as a coach, I do have uh, you know quite a bit of experience with it, but that's not definitely the best person to talk about it. You might want someone who's who's actually been in the sauna, sweating their sweating their uh, weight down. So. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about uh, a number of things like that, and, and uh, I think eight eight episodes is a good start, and it's a, a good time commitment too. Like, you know, we're all pretty busy people between our own coaching and uh, training and, you know, any other side projects we have. So uh, I think eight episodes is a good first season for us. And I think that's a good kind of segue into talking about ourselves here, Ryan, because obviously a lot of um... – you know, a lot of people that might be listening to our podcast or tuning in for the first time to the first episode want to know a little bit about us and, you know, um, in terms of not only who we are as people, but in terms of who we are as coaches and athletes because that also adds a little bit of credibility in terms of why we um, started a podcast and essentially why people should listen to kind of the things that we have to say. So, uh, why don't we start with just talking a little bit about the history of kind of how we got into powerlifting and, um, you know, talk about kind of our journey as, as athletes so far here. Um, Steve, why don't you uh, jump in and answer answer first here. Talk a little bit about maybe your history as, a, as an athlete getting into the sport. All right, so pretty much in high school, always loved lifting weights. Um, didn't know what I was doing at all. Hit up arms and chest a couple times a week. Um, did legs the odd time. Um, I'd say it started to get more serious um, 
third year university, so about two and a half years ago. A few guys from the university um, opened the more like a sports specific gym, and I decided to check it out. And that's where I was uh, introduced to like the powerlifting movements, and here I am today. And I think it's really interesting because you have seen so much success relatively early on in your powerlifting career. Um, you know, only being involved in the sports about what three years, Steve? Yeah, about that two and a half years. I think I would say like my like background in like sports and a th yeah sports in general probably helped me to um, be where I am today. I don't know. Yeah, you see that with uh, yeah with a lot of top athletes that have you know that are successful. They they come from other sports, right? Uh, they Absolutely. have a background in track or football or you know wrestling. So I mean, strength is strength, right? Exactly. So two and a half years ago when Steve did his first competition, I remember Ryan and I actually talking on Facebook and seeing the results of the, I think it was your first competition or second competition, and we were like, holy cow, who is this kid from Ontario? Because that's where you were originally, yeah, and then before you moved to, to BC. And I think you were at your first competition or your second competition, you were actually very, very close to, to I think, the junior um, squat world record. Is that right? Or did you break it unofficially yeah, so in a contest? Yeah, my I think it was provincials. There, um, I guess you're not allowed to break world records in um, at provincial meets, right? You need the IPF judges there or whatnot, or yeah, you have to be level an interna international competition to to break. Yeah, so I I believe I I tied it, and then um, that was my goal, right, to break it at worlds, which I did later on uh, that next year. Yeah, I actually happened to be at in in Ontario provincials. There, we were set up as inner strength at the competition. I remember um, texting some people, being like, uh, "Who's this Steve Casacoli guy?" <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's squatting a world record. And you know, you know, just to just to uh, just to clarify everybody, I don't think it's very normal within your first con first couple competitions to be tying a world record squat. So obviously a lot of heads were turning and certainly Ryan and I were, were saying we've got to get this kid on the uh, on the world team and making sure that all the all the uh, paperwork signed and the money sent at the right time so that you know there's uh, there's we can actually get a Canadian on the on the world record books which which eventually did happen this past year at um, the IPF World Championships in Finland classic world championships Steve do you want to just talk a little bit about your uh, experience at that uh, at that competition and how you did there yeah it was um that was an awesome event, a big one, right? Um, representing Canada at the 2015 uh, World Championships, being my fourth meet ever. Um, yeah, going in, like you have to think of a lot of things, right? A lot of different variables come into play when you're traveling for that long. And um, yeah, ended up hitting a world record squat in the Open 66 class. Um, also placed third in deadlift and uh, third overall. And uh, I was I was coaching that team along with Ryan. We were both coaches on that team, and uh, I think uh, both Ryan and I can say that uh, you were definitely one of the most well-composed. Even though it was only your fourth meet, I think just your sporting background coming into powerlifting really helped you um, calm your nerves and just allow you to to put together your best package on the competition platform. We were really impressed with your composure because a lot of first-time international competitors that we saw on the team didn't have that sort of competition experience. They might have been powerlifting for a long, or, or powerlifting and involved maybe a little bit longer than you, but they didn't have those years of competition experience and going through those emotions, right? Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Ryan Stin. Ryan, you have a little bit of a longer history uh, as an athlete in in the sport. Do you want to talk about kind of how you got involved and and where where that's led you? Yeah, and uh, I think I started actually lifting weights in about 2004. I was 23 or 24 at the time. Um, I'd never touched a weight before then because, you know, I was uh, pretty fat and lazy. So um, my buddy convinced me to go to the gym and try and lose some weight. So uh, in 2005, uh, I did my first competition, which was the Western Canadians um, here in Moose Jaw. And, uh, yeah, I was kind of hooked after that. It's uh, I was lucky enough that we have a... There's a, there's a good group of powerlifters in Moose Jaw, so I got some good coaching pretty early on, and, and it helps kind of ease your transition into the sport. So um, 2005, I did my first competition, and uh, 2008 was the first time I 
represented Canada at Worlds in Newfoundland, um, which was a, obviously a big honor. My first Worlds was in, in Canada. And uh, I placed six of that, uh, that event, so um, pretty happy. And uh, shortly after that, 2009, I hurt my back uh, here at Moose Jaw again at our Nationals. Uh, I, I tweaked my back on my second squat, and uh, maybe not the best idea, but I did the rest of the competition, and I think that uh, kind of ruined it. So for about three years, I was pretty well down and out uh, with a back injury. So I uh, started really coming back in about 2012, and and uh, have since uh, slowly increased totals, and uh, yeah. You know what, I have been, uh, for those of you who don't know, Ryan, well, Ryan just mentioned that uh, he, he had kind of a, a back injury in 2009, and I always remember Ryan being kind of one of these one of these big squatters. But what's even more impressive is that, and I'm sure we'll talk about this at a later episode in more detail, but Ryan has had quite the comeback journey in terms of um, overcoming that injury. And I think a lot of people get injured in the sport and they don't understand the process and the hard work required to actually overcome the injury. Sometimes these injuries and the type of injury that Ryan had can be, you know, kind of game-changing injuries where you don't recover from. But it was really impressive because I remember this year, this this national or this year national championships in uh, in Newfoundland, uh, Ryan actually squatted the um, heaviest squat of all time in Canada. So. Um, I really, I don't think a lot of people know that story of Ryan actually, I think Ryan, maybe you can speak to this. You didn't go, you, you went a few years without getting a personal best in the squad, is that right? Uh, yeah, in 2009, uh, a month before Nationals, I squat uh, 380 kilos at the Arnold's. And then um, a month later at Nationals, I was squatting 370 and, and blew my back out. Um, and then... I think I didn't compete again until the 2010 Nationals, and I was squatting. I think I squat 310 there. So that's how much of a, a decrease I, I took. Um, I think uh, you know during those the dark times I call them, um, my my total went from uh, 945 down to about 810, uh, 815. So it was mostly back, but it affected my deadlift and squat directly. And then indirectly, just mentally, it affected my bench. My my desire to train kind of decreased when, you know, I hit any PBs. Um, I didn't actually hit a squat PB until um, nationals this this year. No, uh, did I do it before it? No, I think it was nationals this year. I hit for my first squat PB. So about six years before. Six years, six years without seeing a personal best on the squat, and I think that just speaks to your dedication and your understanding of that powerlifting is a long-term, just continuous process. And you know, a lot of a lot of a lot of athletes would have kind of hung it up and um, would have quit, retired, and and not kind of persisted as you as you have in the sport and I really look up to that that's the one thing that uh, I didn't know if it was this nationals or maybe a meet prior where you actually achieved a personal best on the squad but I knew it was a long 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 time and uh, and I think that kind of comeback story is is just really really interesting and 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 uh, speaks to kind of your character as an athlete um, just lastly, talking about uh, as an athlete, Ryan, you've also competed at Worlds a few times now. Um, you, you competed at, uh, um, I think it was in Norway, and then again in Denver, was it? So the last two years at the World Championships. Can you talk uh, about those? The last three years, actually. Uh, no, four years. Um, four years. 2011, uh, I started going again, um, and that was in uh, Pilsen, uh, Czech Republic. And then 2012 was in um, Puerto Rico, uh, which is Puerto Rico is where I kind of consider my the start of my comeback. Um, I didn't hit any PBs, obviously. Actually, I hit a, I hit a bench PB. It was my first bench PB since 2008, and uh, everything else was still down. But it was uh, it was my first my, my my like I said, it's my comeback meet, I think. And then uh, into uh, Norway in 2013 and Denver last year. And your highest placing at Worlds was, I think that was in Denver, is that right? Yeah, I placed fourth in Denver. Fourth, okay. So, I think that, uh, 
I think that's a good. Uh, I think that's a good segue into, I guess, talking about myself here as an athlete. I remember, actually, my first powerlifting competition back in Alberta. There wasn't a ton of meets. There was maybe only one or two meets at the time, and I actually remember flying because I really wanted to compete. And the only competition that was around, uh, that was kind of close by, in the in the few months in the few months ahead of me, was a meet in Winnipeg. And I actually remember flying to Winnipeg. I didn't know a single person. Um, I just bought a plane ticket, registered for the meet, and I flew to Winnipeg. And I remember seeing Ryan squatting at that meet. At the time, Ryan had a beard that was braided. <laughs> and it was almost down to his the bottom of his chest. And it was completely braided. I think it was. I think he had some beads in there. Is that right? I think, I think your memory is uh, a little <laughs> faulty. I think right, I my memory is not faulting. I remember this. I think I had about one bead in my little beard. Okay, so there was a bead. All right. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't overly long though, and it was pretty. So I think you have shady. a good. I think you have a good. I think you have a good beard ratio right now. I was gonna say hair beard ratio, but you don't necessarily have <laughs> much hair on top anymore. Uh, anyways, yeah. So my first meet was in Winnipeg, and you know what? I actually went to my first meet, and. I didn't train with a, a, a group of powerlifters, so no one really to coach me. So when I went to this meet, I actually had no idea what I was doing, and I actually bombed out on my first meet. I went through the squat. I was kind of dealing with a pre-existing knee injury, so I didn't really squat as heavy as I as I you know had anticipated because I, my training was affected based on, on this injury. But I was always a good bencher, always a good bencher kind of going through high school. So when I got to the bench... You know, I was just used to the gym style benches. I didn't really know or, or anticipate how long an actual press command was. So when I got into competition, I think I opened with 160 kilos, which is a significant weight for anybody. But I could hit I, that one day. You're gonna hit that at Commonwealth there, Steve. But I went, uh, I went down and I got stapled on my chest three times. I don't think it budged. And uh, you know, as anybody, you know coming into a meet and, and opening with something big and bombing like that, you know, people kind of take, people take notice and they're just like, who is this guy? Like, what was he thinking? Like, did he not know what the rules were? Did he not know that there was a pause? So it was a little bit embarrassing. I actually, I actually was so embarrassed that I just left. I just left and I went back to the airport. I wasn't scheduled to leave till the next day and I just hopped on a flight, the next flight, and I went home. And you know, it was that was kind of my start in the sport. I just kind of got brought down really early on, and I think there's still people who come to their first meet and bomb, and I don't wish that upon anybody. But a lot of people would have dropped out. I just decided to work on the things that you know that I needed to work on to to uh, to at least pass a bench pressing competition and then pass you know all the other lifts. And to get a total, so you know, I went back to the drawing board. Now I already had a lot of competition experience. So many of you know, uh, at least uh, Ryan and Steve know that I um, came from a swimming background. I don't necessarily look like a swimmer right now, being 264 pounds, but it allowed me to learn how to compete because swimming is actually a very, and it allowed me to learn how to train as well and understand the process of training because swimming is one of the most in intense sports from a training perspective you're generally in the pool nine to ten times a week so tons of early morning practices and afternoon practices so two two days and then you're in the gym three to four days a week as well so working hard was never a problem for me I always knew how to work hard I always understood the process of training and peaking for competition and trying to put together your best package on the competition platform so that really served me well in terms of going back to the drawing board Learning the things I need to learn. You know, I met a few powerlifters locally in Calgary, and uh, and you know, started started to improve. And I guess over the years, I just decided to specialize in bench press. It was always kind of the one thing that I was good at. And uh, you know, I did a number of three lift competitions, but it was my bench press that kind of took me to the international level, and I competed at the worlds three times. And uh, and had a great experience doing that, and and yeah, I like to I like to think of myself as a power lifter because I still do three lift competitions every once in a while, but certainly I'm more of a bench press specialist. So coming up is my uh, coming up in terms of my next competition, and all of our next competitions are at the Commonwealth. 
I'm doing the equipped bench press, and Steve is doing the um, men's open classic yeah. um, powerlifting three lift. And Ryan, you're doing the equipped three lift men's open. Is that right? That's right. Yep. So that'll be all of our uh, next competitions, which we're training for at the beginning of December there. Uh, one thing that also kind of brings us together here, guys, not just as athletes, is that we all have, at somewhere along the line, got involved with the coaching side of powerlifting. So I want to talk about kind of how we got involved with coaching in terms of where we are in our coaching careers, um, because all of us, all of us do that. Um, you know, day in and day out, and we um, we we all coach a number of athletes um, at various levels. So, um, why don't I start with um, Ryan here? Ryan, tell us about how tell us about you as a coach. Uh, well, this is where um, you know I have a pretty long history of coaching. I uh, in 2007 we opened up our own uh, training facility here in town. Um, it was mostly just five or six powerlifters that got together and paid the rent. Um, Jeff Butt at the time was uh, my coach and all of our coaches, um, but I always like. And for those of you that don't know, Jeff Butt was the former Canadian Powerlifting Union president. He's also a very high-level coach himself, and he's the one who really kind of brought. And if and correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan, but he's the really the one who brought powerlifting to Moose Jaw, and made Moose Jaw kind of a powerlifting epicenter. Uh, even more than that, he really brought back powerlifting in Saskatchewan. Uh, when he had moved here, Saskatchewan powerlifting had been basically dormant for, I think, uh, five or six years, so he rebuilt it. Um, and definitely Moose Jaw uh, powerlifting probably only exists because of him. Um, when I got involved with Jeff, there was uh, about four or five of them trained together. And myself and my friend decided to, we decided to start powerlifting. So um, I learned from him how he coached, how he programmed um, and then I found I really enjoyed designing programs for people and for myself more. I, it's just an experiment for me. Um, I can I can kind of find something out, test it, and, and see what see what comes of it. So I really like that aspect of it. So I d started designing programs for myself, and eventually eventually everyone else started following my programs instead of and Jeff started following them because I think he was he was probably tired of making programs for years and years. So um, everyone started following my programs and. Uh, and so lately, I've just been kind of actually starting to coach remotely. Um, I, I resisted it for a long time. In 2013, I developed my um, humbly named STIN system, um, which uh, I just published all the programs on my website so people can take it and use it uh, as they see fit. Um, but I kept getting requests for custom programming. People that don't want to train six days a week, um, people that can't do certain things. So. Um, I think it was just uh, earlier this year where I actually first took on my first training client and uh, slowly growing, I don't really advertise myself. So um, it's uh, yeah, pretty new for me to be doing distance coaching, but uh, I'm working through the challenges of it. There, there definitely are there definitely are challenges. I think all of us. I mean, we all coach in person, and and we also do uh, we also coach um, remotely as well. Um, and Ryan, not only um, does the programming uh, for for athletes, but you also coach. Um, you've also coached a few world teams as well, um, and traveled and 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 managed athletes' um, performance on on game day. So, um, what what meets have you have you actually coached um, at, at that level? Um, I was an official coach for the 2009 and 2013 World Games. Uh, people don't know what those are, which most people actually don't. Um, it's it's the top level of powerlifting, basically. Um, only uh, 40 men and 40 women get invited from around the world, and uh, it's actually an invitation system where you have to um, either place top three at Worlds or get extremely lucky and catch a wild card slot. So. Um, and it's only every it's only every four years, is it not? That's right. It's it's just like the Olympics. It's four years. It's a multi-sport event. Um, it's kind of like the Olympics junior. Um, it's an IOC thing, so the Olympics is part of the Olympic Committee. Um, but uh, it's sports that aren't in the Olympics necessarily. Um, it's a lot of sports start in the World Games and transition to the Olympics. But 
So in 2009, uh, Tom Keane, who's a lifter from, top, from uh, Newfoundland, and Rhea were both lucky enough to get invites to the World Games, and myself and Jeff Butt went and coached the two of them there in Taiwan. And then 2013, um, Rhea got, again, invited to the World Games in uh, Cali, Colombia, and uh, myself and her brother, uh, Ryan Fowler, actually went down and coached there. Uh, besides those two, I've coached um, uh, quite a few world teams, either officially or unofficially. Um, most recently, I was in Finland as an assistant coach with Avi. Um, Ray was competing, um, so I went down to... I was going with her, so I decided to help coach as well. So so if, you, so if you're listening and you don't know who Ray is, that's Ryan's wife, Ray Stin. Now, you've coached Ray essentially... Um, from from the ground up, I, I want to say, almost. I mean, for the last. No, she was actually pretty accomplished before I I started with her. Okay. Um, Jeff had, Jeff started her out. Uh, she started training with Jeff, and and then in 2009 when he moved away, I I basically became her primary coach, and then uh, somehow I converted that into a marriage. So <laughs> I guess it worked out. And uh, and now you two are a power couple, and she's she's ranked she's ranked number one on the all-time female rankings. Uh, so she's the highest female uh, equipped Wilkes, and uh, she was the highest uh, classic Wilkes until uh, about two weeks ago when Steph Puttacombe, uh took that by I think one Wilkes point or or half Wilkes point something like that. Very well coached by Tom Keene as well. So. It's very interesting to see the women's rankings kind of jump back and forth because there are about five women at the top right now who are kind of jostling into that first place, and it's just about lining up competitions throughout throughout the year to see who's who's going to be jumping up into that number one spot. Uh, Steve, why don't you talk about yourself as a as a powerlifting coach? Um, I know that you have specialized in powerlifting perhaps over the last year, but you also have a wide um, uh, ranging uh, kind of coaching history in other sports as well, um, which has helped you in, in, in coaching powerlifting. So why don't you talk about a little bit about that? Absolutely. So pretty much right after university, I've always had a passion for training, coaching. I've always wanted to, I don't know, start up my own um, business. So yeah, right after university there, I started my own online strength conditioning business. And pretty much from beginner gym goer to elite athletes of all sports and when I started out just mostly had powerlifting clients just because my background right getting into the sport and stuff like that and um, yeah so I do like weekly updates similar to you guys um, do check-ins whenever along with uh, the video feedback and um, yeah along the past I think year year and a half or so I've slowly got like a wide range of athletes, so from like the power lifter to just the general strength and conditioning. I've had um, an NLL, like lacrosse player, pro player, did um, some strength and conditioning for him as well. Um, yeah, along with that, I actually recently just got a job as a strength and conditioning coach at Performance Institute in Burnaby. So what goes on there is I run a, like a skating treadmill. So if you don't know what that is, it's like a treadmill where you could actually skate on with your skates. Um, this is to work on like technique and stuff like that. Pretty cool, actually. Um, uh, yeah, so you're like harnessed in and everything. Uh, along with that, I do like one-to-one -one training, group training, team training, and assessments as well. So, yeah, more of a like a wide spe spectrum there. But majority of my clients are powerlifters, just because of I guess my background, right? I think uh, I think you're actually coming from a fairly unique background in that a lot of powerlifting coaches have just coached powerlifters, yeah, and they don't have that broader strength and conditioning knowledge or how to coach the athlete, um, and uh, and yeah, I mean just just from hearing about you know you are a full time strength and conditioning coach. That's what you yeah. do. Um, you coach athletes, and um, because of powerlifting, right? You're you're more involved with um, with coaching with with coaching powerlifters, and um, and it's great just to see your athletes. Uh, I follow I follow your uh, Facebook page there, and you know your athletes are certainly coming along in in their training, and and I'm, we're starting to see your athletes kind of really get up there in terms of uh, in terms of their performance. What, it's not just uh, them as well, right? It's what. It's not just me, it's them as well putting in the work, right? That's right, yeah. 
So I guess I'll talk about myself as a coach here. So both Steve and I, uh, we come from kind of a kinesiology background. This is, you know, what we did in school. And, you know, we obviously study uh, study human movement and sports performance. And, you know, obviously, you know, uh, in conjunction with that kind of, uh, with that education, you know, you're involved with powerlifting. So the two are kind of just naturally married to each other in terms of, you know, you're learning about it, you're kind of applying it with your own, you know, your own training, and then, and then eventually, um, you know, as you gain more credibility and as you, you know, um, you know, you start learning more, you you start coaching, and uh, my coaching essentially started as a personal trainer. I trained at kind of a big box gym for a long time, and um, and worked with uh, just general general clients for health and health and wellness. But um, but certainly, you know, with my background, a lot of clients and athletes started to approach me in terms of getting involved in powerlifting and, and going to competitions. So for quite a long time there, uh, you know, I had a little group out of the gym that I trained trained at, and then then uh, we all kind of um, trained for competitions locally, and then uh, and then. Coaching just kind of took off as I started my master's in uh, in kinesiology. I I um, started to uh, do research um, with with powerlifters and 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 specifically with master athletes and elite master athletes. Um, I always found that population to be really interesting because in powerlifting, unlike other sports, you actually have um, athletes competing at an older age and being very successful. Um, you know, if you look at the world records and you look at the national records, you have people competing in their 30s and 40s breaking national records and world records, whereas in other sports, um, you know, you don't see that average age to be, um, to be uh, as old as those in powerlifting. So um, I always found that to be very interesting, so I kind of, um, pursue that, and um, and somewhere along the way, I think it was in 2011, I uh, I started my own coaching business, and obviously started coaching athletes one on one, both in person and remotely, and um, and uh, just like Steve, um, um, coach the programming side of things, um, the technique through video analysis, and uh, and obviously on competition day, and then through that. I have coached a number of world teams as well, along with Ryan, and um, and I've traveled to all over Prague as a coach, and um, Finland this year, South Africa last year, and uh, I actually just um, got named as the Commonwealth head coach. So not only will I be lifting on the first day, I'll be hanging out the whole week and helping the 120 athletes who are com Canadian athletes who are competing at the Commonwealth. Um, help them with their performance there as well. So, so that's myself as a coach, and uh, I think it's I think we all come together on a number of different um, coaching philosophies and methods, and I think that's why one of the reasons why we actually get along so much and and um, and value each other's opinions, and one of the reasons why we wanted to start a podcast is because we do see eye to eye on a number of different um, coaching philosophies and, and methods. Um, so why don't we move on and why don't we talk about what uh, what our viewers can, uh, what our listeners can expect moving forward in our next episode. So this uh, is episode one. Episode two will be released uh, in two weeks and we have a very special guest uh, who has agreed to come on as our first guest on the podcast and we're all really excited. Ryan, do you want to talk about who that first guest is? Uh, sure. I think um, uh, I'll just say Kelly Branton is going to be our first guest. Um, he's I think most people in Canada probably know who Kelly is. Um, he's uh, definitely one of the the I think I think he is the best uh, by Wilkes. Um, yeah, he's ranked number one. Yeah, uh, by Wilkes right now in Canada for for classic lifting. Uh, placed third at Worlds this year in Finland, uh, and probably. Uh, one of, if not the most competitive classes. Um, I've, you know, being backstage to help him was was definitely a, a highlight for me. Um, he's uh, he's an excellent lifter. Uh, he he puts in the work, he puts in the time, and uh, you know, I think he's going to be an excellent first guest for us. So, 
If you don't know who Kelly Branton is, he is a lifter from Ontario. I actually competed with him as a 100 kilo lifter, sorry, 110 kilo lifter, way, way back when. And now, obviously, Kelly is a super, and I, I think he weighed in at like 150 kilos at, at Worlds this year. And he was actually one of the lightest supers that lifted in his class compared to the uh, other two podium finishers. And not only was he third in his weight class, but based on Wilkes, he was the third strongest male open competitor at that entire competition um, out of any body weight class. So um, he is one of the top lifters, not only in Canada, but in the world. And, uh, and like I said, he's been around the sport a long time. I've known Kelly personally. He has, just like Ryan, and this will be a, a point of conversation uh, next episode. You know, he has had some injuries. Obviously, when you're moving the weight that he does, and you're pushing your body to the extreme in the way that Kelly does, um, you're going to get beat down. You're going to get injuries, and he's had kind of a similar path through the sport where he, where he had to take some time off, and then and then uh, and then start a comeback uh, journey to where he is today. And um, we have a, a few topics for for Kelly, that being one of them. But uh, maybe Steve wants to t wants to just mention kind of um, the the primary topic that we're going to be talking about next week with Kelly um, and 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 what he can bring to the table in terms of this topic. Yeah. So for uh, next week, what we've all decided is the main topic is going to be equipped versus raw lifting. And uh, like I myself. I don't have uh, much experience in uh, the equipped side, but same with the raw. I've, I've yeah a couple years there, but um we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna expect some the conversations like the difference between yeah, squatting raw versus in a suit, um, benching raw within um, like benching with a bench shirt, and then of course deadlifting raw versus um, deadlifting in the suit, right? And uh, maybe yeah Abby and Ryan can elaborate on the um, equip side there a bit. And I think uh, lots of people don't know, but uh, but Kelly actually has competed uh, at the national level equipped. In 2009 and 2010, he lifted at nationals equipped. And, uh, you know, he's, so he's, I mean, he's been in the sport a long time when back then there was only equipped lifting and, and that's what everyone did. So, you know, he's transitioned now to being a classic lifter, but uh, he's, he has a history in the equipped side as well. And you know, if you if you follow Kelly, if you you know watch some of his training videos, you know he does use um, you know still some methods of equip lifting in in his raw lifting uh, in his in his raw lifting training, and it'll be interesting to kind of hear how he how he implements that in, into his training. And Kelly is also one of the most intense guys I've ever met. Like Ryan said, both Ryan and I were coaching him backstage at the World Championships this year. And, uh, you know, he's fun to coach because he's so intense. He's just this intense guy. And, you know, two days before the competition, he was walking around like it was competition day. Like he was just yeah. so fired up to lift. And uh, in, terms of, in terms of coaching him, it was quite easy in a sense because there's no mental prep that you have to do with Kelly. He's always in the zone and ready to go. And... Um, um, but the hard part for Ryan and I, and we can talk, we can talk next week with with Kelly about it and, and get his perspective, was just the entire uh, number and strategy game that went along with getting him on the podium. And it was quite a, um, you know, there was four lifters there, each jostling back and forth, literally every attempt, and every attempt just was so crucial to make sure that the number on the board was the number that he lifted and was successful at because. It could have gone any which way. Um, he could have ended up off the podium. So, um, so certainly we'll we'll get his ideas uh, and his perspective on his experience at Worlds and and kind of what he has um, coming up for Commonwealth because he is competing at Commonwealth as well uh, as part of our team. So, I think uh, those are some things that we can look forward to. Um, and uh, what we want to do right now here. Uh, in wrapping up our first podcast episode is we want to uh, allow you the opportunity to check out our website. Ryan, what is our website and what can people buy on the website at this time? Uh, so the website is kadianpowerliftingpodcast.com. Um, obviously, just how it sounds. No spaces, no dashes, no, no anything. 
uh, CanadianPowerlifting.com. Uh, right now we're going to be uh, it's pretty basic. We got our, our our bios on there, explaining again a little bit of who we are and our experience in the sports. Um, so you can go read more about uh, about us. Um, we're also going to have a, a competition or a a contest this time, uh, where if you go in and, and fill out a, a form uh, explaining uh, the topics you're kind of interested in seeing us talk about, as well as any guests you'd like to see on our on our show, um, if you go fill those things out, then, uh, then we're going to enter you in a competition or a contest. Uh, and the more details will be on the website about uh, the fine the fine points. Um, if you fill those, those in, we're going to put you in a comp or a contest for a pair of uh, SPD knee sleeves, as Abby mentioned earlier. And uh, so yeah, powerlifting pod Canadian powerlifting podcast dot com. Um, and we're going to slowly add content uh, articles and, and updates to that as we as we go through this first season. If you go on our website, CanadianPowerlifingPodcast.com, you will uh, come to a page, and if you answer two questions, the two questions are really simple. Who would you like to hear on our podcast, and what topics would you like us to discuss? If you enter those in, uh, you will uh, be entered into a little bit of a draw to win those knee sleeves. And guess what? I may have to enter that draw because I need some new knee sleeves. <laughs> I know you don't think I squat, guys, but I do. And I need a new pair of knee sleeves. No, I, I believe because I saw you squat last year at uh, the Westerns, and uh, you squat quite a bit. So I'm always disappointed when I don't see you doing three lifts. <laughs> once a year, once a year I'll squat for you, Ryan. That's it. That's all you're gonna get. My body can't handle it otherwise. I'm not that durable. So, folks, that's wrapping up our first podcast episode. We uh, hope you enjoyed listening and learning a little bit about uh, the podcast. Um, specifics in terms of what you can expect on our podcast and uh, learning a little bit about the uh, podcasters who will be hosting each uh, every other week and that's it tune in next time to the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast and we'll have Kelly Branton as our first guest you've been listening to the Canadian Powerlifting Podcast the podcast that brings you the best of powerlifting in Canada hosted by Stephen Cassioli Ryan Stinn, and myself, Abby Silverberg. The next episode will be broadcast on the 29th of October, 2015. In the meantime, please check out our website at www.canadianpowerliftingpodcast.com.